So I'm in New York City and I'm exploring for a while and you know I had to check out some black owned restaurant concepts. Let me share three of them that I absolutely love that I think you cannot miss when you're in the city. All of these bowls have been really creative but really well balanced. <laughs> the gravy, flavorful. I hate bland gravy, but this gets a really fluffy and the fried chicken still has like that crispy outside. It's well seasoned, but it's really juicy. Look at this oxtail grilled cheese, y'all. <laughs> mm. Savory, melty perfection. I love New York City. The culinary diversity and plethora of options for activities, art, music, everything. It makes the city feel limitless and also expensive as fuck. I can't lie. For this trip, I was only there for a short time, balancing work and family obligations, so I was limited in what I could explore. But of course, I did make my way to some dope Black-owned spots that I really enjoyed. First, we have to talk about this Black woman-owned ramen spot serving up breakfast-themed bowls like everything egg drop and bacon, egg, and cheese ramen. Look at this beautiful piece of meat. Oh, there's a little cheese on it. There's a little fresh cracked pepper. Oh, let's go. Look at how perfect this gooey, gooey marinated egg is. I also am a bacon, egg, and cheese girl in the morning, so I'm like, it's perfection. You don't have to change it. Or time for my favorite part. Slurpy noodles. I love noodles. Can't go wrong. Perfection. Hey everyone, I'm Rashida, chef and founder of Ramen by Ra here in NoHo, New York City. Ramen is something that I was really in love with before the pandemic, so I will go out to eat ramen often. And then when the pandemic hit and all the restaurants closed, I couldn't get my ramen. So I said to myself, okay, you're a chef, you went to culinary school, take matters in your own hand and learn how to make ramen. And that's where it started during the pandemic. And in the pandemic, while studying and watching documentaries, it actually brought a sense of calm and stillness to my life currently at that time. So as much as I was healing myself during the pandemic through food, I started giving ramen out and those individuals were being healed as well because we couldn't get it anywhere. So I started with ramen kits, doing pop-ups, private chef events and collaborations. And I started to notice that it started to grow organically and I couldn't like put it on hold and go find a job. I said, no, I have to like keep this going. People really are connecting to it. They love it. And it's something new and exciting about it. So I started to really focus on ramen by raw to create, you know, new innovative bowls, but still keeping it traditional with the broth and the noodles, but then expressing my personalities through the toppings. And that's how we get to the breakfast and brunch concept. This is the egg drop. So many nostalgic memories right now about egg drop soup. You have these like really fluffy eggs on top. Mm. Mm. Oh yeah, so good with everything seasoning. So whereas the bacon, egg, and cheese really had like this nice thick bacon on top and like really pork flavor in the broth, this one, the broth is infused with sesame and it's giving very sesame bagel like with egg kind of vibe. So good. Okay, I'm trying the grab blocks with this cream cheese foam is wild. So you do get a little bit of the cream cheese flavor. It's just like a little, it's very light. The crispy capers, pickled red onion, cream cheese foam. The flavors are, are there. This is so good. All of these bowls have been really creative, but really well balanced and well executed and just so nostalgic for like very core memories of my childhood or core breakfast memories. It is reservation only, and there are just a few seats at this spot in Bowery Market, so I'll link to the info in the caption below so you can reserve your spot. Y'all, Ramen by Raw has only been open for about three months, and there are already regulars here coming back for the second or third time, sitting at the counter, all chit-chatting, getting to know each other. It's such a nice experience. Highly recommend if you're in New York. And for this next spot, I'm headed to Harlem. I woke up late, I'm very hungry, and I need a hearty breakfast. Now this spot, Harlem Biscuit Company, I'm gonna cover very briefly. And that's only because I was in a hurry when I was there and I ate and filmed as fast as possible. But my friend Dominique from the platform Dom in the City, who covers a ton of New York City food and things to do, recommended this place to me and it did not disappoint. Located in Harlem, this is a really casual spot where you order on the kiosks and then choose a seat and the staff will bring out your food to you. And I really love that they have different types of biscuits that you can choose for the base of your meal. And then each meal is like a bowl or a sandwich all based around those biscuits as the base. 
Holy shit. It's so rich, but it's perfect. I really like that every element of this is well executed. The gravy, creamy, flavorful. I hate bland gravy. So biscuits are really fluffy, but they have a little bit of crunch like around the edges and on the bottom. And the fried chicken still has like that crispy outside. It's well seasoned, but it's really juicy. This is a good quick stop in Harlem. Time to try this biscuit sandwich. I might regret this in an hour when I'm at Harlem Cycle doing a spin class down the street, but honestly, that's the classic breakfast sandwich. You can't go wrong. The everything seasoning adds like a little bit of crunch. Fluffy biscuit, fluffy egg, cheese, crispy bacon. It's salty, it's comforting. This is the face of someone that's very full and very happy. And third in this roundup, a black owned restaurant in Brooklyn that was actually on my list as I had tried one of the chef's specialties years ago at my favorite annual event, the family reunion, which is this ultra luxury black food festival that I go to in Virginia. And I love that dish. And because of it, I swore that when I had the chance, I would come into his restaurant. Look at this oxtail grilled cheese, y'all. <laughs> Tomato jam, oxtail that's been braised for hours and hours, brittled bread, cheese. All right, I'm gonna go in from the side. Be messy. Mm. Savory, melty perfection. Hi, this is Chef Sean. Welcome to Fat Fowl, going on Zeki's Chef. Fat Fowl is a rotisserie chicken concept that's built around Caribbean inspired flavors. And though this is a casual restaurant in a busy market hall, the menu has some range, y'all. The rotisserie chicken that it's named for, I'd say is a must try. This is the lavender brine chicken. Has Caribbean spices. He said lots of herbs. Let's see. You know if lavender is too strong, it can taste like soap. So y'all gonna get this real reaction right now. Okay, the lavender is really light. It adds like a, it's weird to say floral, but like a little bit of a floral, like a, a light element and lots of herbaceousness. I didn't think I was gonna like this, but it's pretty good. One of my favorite dishes is the jerk chime and mushrooms. Reason being that is, it actually takes my love for Trinidad and I actually devoted that dish to Trinidad where it's the tamarind, the spiciness. I love that the tamarind really comes through. So you get that sweet, but tamarind almost has like a, almost a sweet and sour flavor sometimes. And then it's a little bit spicy and really saucy. I love it. I would eat these mushrooms on a sandwich, like a really messy, sloppy sandwich, almost like a sloppy joe. Amazing. And I will forever be a fan of this mac and cheese. So I could come here just for the mac and cheese. I know the oxtail grilled cheese is like a thing, but I consider myself a mac and cheese connoisseur. And I'll be honest, I don't like a lot of places mac and cheese. I think it's just greasy and kind of bland. This, so creamy, like inside the noodle, all outside, so coated really flavorful. This is mac and cheese. And then I'm gonna slip in one spot that's not black owned, but I have to mention it anyway as a bonus. Let's chat about Cadence for a second. Look at this fried green tomato. Mm. The romesco sauce underneath is really like creamy, but light. This was another recommendation from Dom in the City, whose info I'll put below because her platform is an amazing New York City resource and it did not disappoint. Two talented black chefs lead the kitchen here and developed the menu and they have crafted such a fun and well-executed vegan soul food menu. Look at this lasagna, y'all. I'm ready. So the, the lasagna is supposed to have a bolognese sauce and they really nailed the flavor of a bolognese even though it's vegan. So good. And beyond the food here just being really satisfying, the wines they carry are all black owned, the space itself is super cute, and I will definitely be back here the next time I'm in the city. And if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I actually know that I'll be back in New York City in just a few weeks, and I cannot wait to try out some more spots. And don't forget to hit subscribe for more videos like this, exploring black owned and black led concepts far and wide, and so much more.